All right. So he picked up seven infantry artillery tank, filling out his three and six for his three transports. Um, he did bombard Corellia, which you know, I, when I look at this, I, I realize this, with the UK at least, it's not it's not a bad idea, right? So he's let's see if we can find it. Here we go. He's using an infantry and artillery and two cruisers. So this should be one hit. And this is two-thirds of a hit, so he's getting one and two-thirds hit each time, taking a loss of two. And again, that falls within the ratio of, of what I say allies are okay with losing to the Germans. Um, again, just going back to that hold, in the end, it's about the defensive power for Germany and the offensive power for um, allies. So... I mean, I almost kind of would rather this be two infantry if I was him, maybe. But then, obviously, you're even more, you know, even that much less likely to get that second hit. But I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a decent. It's, it's not bad because there's not much risk to this since he's in here and he's already he was able to take the other two territories that he wanted and he doesn't have idle UK just kind of wait sitting around, right? So. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against this, against that move of uh, bombarding. What it does mean, though, is that the he did not pull them out to help deal with the uh, situation down here that he's facing. And uh, so I, I sat here and I debated. So I could go 23 in Brazil, or I could go 22 and over here into the West uh, Africa area. You know, you think three one obvious play. You know, you go with the three, right? Um, the thing with the one, if I'm sitting here in C zone 23, I'm threatening DC and I'm threatening UK at the same time. Brazil is only threatening DC. Furthermore, now either one, if I go here, he's got two destroyers he can drop to block me from attacking or more likely just build and stack C zone 11. I go here. Again, he can drop a destroyer here, and he can drop a destroyer here and block me from either one of those. So it's not like I got a really heavy threat on either one of these. And he's got enough in here, um, you know, he'll, he'll be able to handle me. From 23, though, there's two advantages to 23 that I really had to weigh. If my fighters are in 23 on my carrier, they can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, so they could re they could be supporters to all three of these. From season 22, it's one, two, three, four. So they can only be reinforcement for France only. Furthermore, if my fleet's in 23, I could, oops, skedaddle into 14 relatively easily and then destroy or block myself as I go in there and then use this fleet to clean up North Africa, you know, whatever, you know, come back through Egypt, you know, different, there's different things that I could do with that. I don't know that that'd be all that great because he does have a lot of units here and I've only got four infantry, right? So that would put me at risk of the Suez never being an opening, getting myself trapped and the U.S. come in here and wipe me out. So I, I, I don't know that the meds all that enticing but i had to throw it in there as a possibility all that said and done i'm going to stick with brazil so that he has to build more or use destroyer blocks which again i think he just going to build more the interesting thing there he'll build enough so i can't really go to 18 like i'd like to but uh you know i i could come back down here to south africa i can go this way and block him with a destroyer you know, there, there's different options that I have, and I can even sneak around this way and then hit back up the backside, you know, hit in, uh, to the Panama if he uh, doesn't come through. So, I don't know. We got different plays that we could, could play around with. You know, it, it's interesting, you know, say his fleet, he builds here, I come here, he comes through Panama. You know, we can sit here and play peekaboo. I can come back over here and sit <laughs> sling back. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, but since he has Panama, ultimately, it's his, to his benefit, I think. So, in any case, that's just talking a lot about this. 
Um, with all that said, too, one of the things I could do is I can just drop my infantry right here in South Africa with my one transport. Um, since he moved on up. And there's no bombers that can reach my transport down here if I just leave him and have the other transport take probably Brazil. I'm probably going to Brazil. So I'm thinking with two transports, though, from here, he builds. I sacrifice one to take out uh, Panama, bring come around here. He could take Panama. Yeah, he'd have me dead zoned anyways. You know, just interesting. The, the whole Panama thing, this kind of, I guess I could go back into Panama then and retake it, but then he'll clear them out and I'll be out of units just to go back and forth on Panama. I don't know. It's tempting just to sit in South Africa and go ahead and take Brazil, I think. Because I just, I don't see any way forward pressing this way. I'm not, I mean, he can easily defend up here, right? Meanwhile, this whole fleet's going to go up to C-Zone 3 to defend up there. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, I can build 15 units, so I'm building 15 units. When I'm when I got this uh, factory up here, I like to put two artilleries up at the front. Now that we got our defensive power stack, now we need to build up our attack power. So we're going to build two infantry, or two artillery at a time until our artillery gets caught up with my uh, infantry a little bit better. And then I had three extra. I could have bought three more artillery, but I like getting a tank because. I like to have a few more tanks and fighters ready to head to Berlin when we do take uh, Moscow. It may be smarter to build more artilleries first and then tanks a little, couple more rounds later. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where I'm at. So he's got 28, 29 ground, 14 air in there, but his... Uh, 29 ground to my 19, 24 that I'll have up here, plus these guys, got to overcome his air, so we got, we've got we got a few rounds till we get there, kind of talking myself into Maybe a load of artillery to come catch up with these guys we're building. I think we're going to do that. And then we'll start switching over to tanks with the extra income. So I want to trade heavily with Russia, so I want to make sure I take those. I'm not really interested in trading heavily with the UK or US, so we're just going to take the 1-1 one, one here. Doing the 2-1 over here because he does have those tanks, and when you fail this and the tank starts blitzing in there, then that, that, that really starts getting ugly. So... That's what we're going to do there. I don't think we have any attacks here. I don't really need the bomber to sit in France this next turn because, you know, all five of these transports can take off and these transports can't get over. So there will be no, no, no worry about naked transport sitting over here. So I don't really need to keep it in France because the problem when you have, when you leave Japan air in France, that means you're guaranteeing that J Germany had to hold it France for another turn. And um, I don't know that I really want to keep guaranteeing that. This was for a unique situation.
maybe the following turn if I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'll put a one back here to prevent him from just dropping guys in 10, but I see no benefit this turn. Oh, shoot. Yeah, don't want to forget about these guys. All right. I think let's just eat up the money, right? Oh, we could use a bummer over here. I kind of want to keep the bomber in France, Italy to still help over here because one, two, three, four, five, six you know, prevents him from landing transports down here. Not that I think he's going that route, but I don't think I want to bomb the UK. That's always fun. I don't like having bombers do nothing. We could hit his dude, but that doesn't really do us any good. Bomb the UK, that's fun. Is that really worth it though? I mean, he's still building nine units and not really, I mean, I would have to get three just to make him spend anything. I just don't know that it's worth the risk. If he was down to only UK and didn't have all of Africa and India going, then that might be a better thing, but he's still got enough income and building spots that that's not really a impact. Not sure it's worth the risk. I just don't, I hate not using them. I suppose we could bomb Norway up here, but indecisiveness, indecisiveness. What? I don't think I've ever bombed Norway in my life playing this game. Time to try something new. Don't normally like bombing two IPC ones because, I mean, the best you can get is a four out of it, right? A five and a six is just a waste. I hate, I hate idle bombers, and I don't really want to go down that way. I get a five or a six on the bombing raid, that that just is just horrible luck. Oh, there's the six, so <laughs> ah. should have bombed UK. <laughs> Yay. 
Always like the ones right next to the capital to win, win big without a loss. Make them have to work to kill them back. So we got a couple twos, a couple ones. So be it. Ooh, I need to create a destroyer's last scenario defense profile. Don't think I have any that, that do that. Oh, hey, I did do one at some time. Let's take a look at this. Uh... Let's see, that's just Kaza. So he's not bombarding Kaza, so we're okay there. That's fine. Really interested in, so... I don't have any cruisers in the stacks. So I'm not worried about that. Destroyers, last, and subs present. Subs are fighting. Take the single hit first. Fighters last. I've got Brazil, so if he does sink the carriers, the fighters land on Brazil. I think that's all right. it in there. Got destroyers going other than the destroyer last and then the carrier goes and then the fighters and then the battleships. And if he attacks it we're gonna want max defense. It'll be a long trip home if he does sink that. <laughs> Two, three, four. Uh, uh. Oh, he'd have to go South Africa, Madagascar, down here, around. So, yikes! That is a long trip home if uh, if he does sink the <laughs> those guys. suppose we could look at pivoting down and something like that. Really? Oh, well. Like we said, we made him build these subs. If he attacks, that means he's using a whole bunch of IPC to attack. So, <clears throat> do our dice god chant before I wrap up.
Japan is up and producing heavily. We should have got pretty good money that time too, right? 52. 52 turn, that's nice. 42, 94. So he's got six IPC, but US still has to go. So he's still going to continue to build that on me, but we live on. A little thin on there, but he went in. Then again, like we talked about, we can bring Germany down and remnants come in and up. So this is what this looks like. Carrier, two destroyers, two bombers, four subs. So, did I? Two bombers, four subs, two destroyers, a carrier. Two, two, one. Two. So, just to kind of show. <clears throat> So that's what he's looking at. 39% chance to win. So I don't think he'll take that attack because that would require him throwing at that same thing in a carrier and two bombers. So I don't think he'll take the attack. If he does, I, it's a positive for me. I think he'll stack East USA, you know, build a couple of Friders, and then he'll have that you know, six, seven, eight, nine stacked versus my two, four, five, six, seven. I wish I would have left the, the bomber in France if one, two, three, four, five, six, if I could reach Brazil from hit 11 and hit, reach Brazil, that would be nice. But as is from here, we can still hit one, two, three, four, five, six, here, here, here. You know, all of these are targetable as well as even to here are all zones that can be targeted by the bomber still. All right, a little extra talking. There we go for the night.